we are sitting here in the courtyard of the French Laundry. And um, the French Laundry at one point was actually a French steam press laundry up until around the turn of the century. Uh, for a while there it was a saloon, it was a brothel for a while, then it was a home. And now it's the French Laundry ever since I think it's 1978 when they opened this restaurant. And it's considered one of the better restaurants in the USA. It's uh, run by Thomas Keller, who's like a pioneer in the farm to table movement. We're here not because I would ever spend the fortune that it costs to eat dinner here, uh, but because we did a favor for a friend and she is uh, treating us all to a dinner at the French Laundry and a hotel room nearby just to thank us. And uh, it's a very nice thanks and I definitely appreciate it, Helen. Thank you very much for what you're doing. I have in my hand a glass of Salon Champagne, which is uh, one of the classic things that they do here. We're having champagne and canopies, then we're gonna have the Evolution Dinner. Apparently it's a big, gluttonous, over the top, dinner that includes wagyu beef and truffles and caviar and and all of this stuff and i'm going to talk to everyone and go wah, 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 to everybody <laughs> gavin good choice yeah i don't i, I don't agree with gavin, good choice. <laughs> but i should have a good time and i think everybody else is going to have a good time so let's start our celebration seasoned with seasonings like an everything bagel. And inside it's got a rolled up cookie and then it's got salmon and cream cheese on the inside. Cabot cheddar cheese cracker with crispy shallots inside. Anyway, let's we'll see. No, oh, that's nice. The cheese is very sharp. This is good, I like it. This is this was the lamb pad thai that came out a little oh, bit ago. Oh, that was okay. easy. <laughs> I will. This is a lamb pate. It's got a whole grain mustard on top, and then on the very top is a nasturtium leaf. Helen has given us the works here. She's ordered everything over the top. So this is a poppy seed tuile. Looks like they did some molecular cuisine here because the avocado looks like it's kind of uh, grainy. You want to taste it? Mmm. Oh, yeah. This is good. The avocado is really creamy inside, but it's got some kind of grain on the outside that's good. Pistachio? Very nice. Mm. This is shrimp. On it, it has micro basil and it has Aleppo peppers on it which we like Aleppo peppers, because when we were in Italy, we tried it, they were very spicy and Young loved it. Okay, it's fastened here with some kind of a crema. Anyway, baba ganoush, that's eggplant. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Got a little spiciness, you can taste the cumin in it. It's really good, very tasty. Hey, bra, get wine here, yeah? I, I just mentioned that we have a clothespin old style holding the napkins onto the table, which is basically reminiscent of an old French laundry. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. What is this? <laughs> okay, now an American gazpacho. Oh, this is nice. It's, it's got it definitely has a sweeter flavor than the Spanish gazpacho I've had, but it's very good. 
It's got a tomato gelée on the bottom and a gazpacho on the top. And it's got green onions inside and little chunks of tomato. It's really good, very tasty. Where's Pacific Shimahaji on the white plate with a puffed corn chicharron as well as a golden pineapple mustarda. The last one, Japanese big fin squid with a lemongrass pesto as well as finger lines coming from. All right, I wonder if they heard him. Okay, I, I got some of what we've got here. We've got a uni panacata. It's very tender, very soft, the panna cotta. Oh, yes. Okay. And very similar story. He engineered that. Mm. That's such a sick resume. Right? It's unbelievable. He goes and pitch himself to a company. Like all these, I was an asshole. Oh, that's nice. That's very dry. It's crisp. It's good. It is crazy. Because, like, oysters from Duxbury, Massachusetts. Okay. This is, this is a classic dish from the French Laundry. They serve this at every every chef's table that they have here. It's called Oysters and Pearls. It's got a tapioca sauce on it. It's got the oysters and then it's got caviar on top of it. It's really over the top decadent, but it is a classic dish here. <laughs> and we have a nice French Sauvignon Blanc to go with it. Mm -hmm. The caviar is so beautiful. I know. Like did, did, did you video it? I did. It looks like little black flowers is sitting in the, the plate. Okay, here's an oyster. So pretty. That's oysters. <laughs> oh, these are oysters. Mm -hmm. these, these are the oysters? Those are the oysters, yeah. Mm. It's tapioca mm. in the sauce. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. My kids are gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I already told them, they're like, what? <laughs> and it is really good with wine. I'm gonna Gavin, good choice. Yeah. I don't I don't agree with that. Gavin, good choice. 2018 vintage. Okay. Ocean Ember Air, one of the top vineyard sites in there. So. That's great. <laughs> Which is going to be like a Chardonnay. Greetings. An egg custard baked right inside of the eggshell, topped off with uh, black truffle ragu. And a chai chip. So what we have here is an egg custard inside the eggshell. They've got some truffle and some chive. And we got it with a white burgundy. What is in the top of here? I don't know. That's very smooth. But it's almost like waffle. You can taste the truffle and the custard. Yeah. It's really, really nice flavor. It's a very mild, it's not the strong truffle oil flavor that you get with the restaurants that serve truffle oil on stuff. This is a very mild truffle flavor in the custard. Mm -hmm. It goes really well with the white burgundy. The two balance the flavors out. It's, it's custard. I can taste the truffle. It's really nice. So the bottom line is, this is hummus and falafel with some uh, with some greens. But yeah, but it's got all kinds of names and pedigrees on it. But I'm sure it's quite good. Oh, there's like pickled cucumber and radish on top of the hummus. It's a little spicy. Every dish has come out on a different. Plate. Right? Different yeah. kind of plate, different yeah. shape. Yeah. Imagine how much time they spend thinking about what the presentation This is, is nice. Yeah. You can taste the spices, you can taste the pickling. It's mm. really it's really a good combination. A little spicy hummus. It's good. Okay. And there's a falafel. Yeah. A falafel lollipop. Uh, what is this? It's so pretty. Maybe 
a mini squash flower. Mini squash oh. flower. Oh. How cute is this? Oh. Hello, baby flower. <laughs> 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 Thank God I didn't see that before I hired you. <laughs> 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 You'd be like, no. <laughs> Him? I wouldn't want him. The <laughs> Basque side up near uh -huh. the mountains. And then the Murrieta is in Alta, but it's so far south in Alta that it's mm -hmm. near the very warm area of Rio Alcaja, or it changed its name recently to Alma Vesa. Uh -huh. So that's where a lot of the garnache is planted and the yes. climate's a little... Okay, we have here a lobster galette with a Meyer lemon sauce and a chanterelle mushroom. And uh, we still have some of that white burgundy left, and we also have some of the Sauvignon Blanc, all of which is going to go really well with lobster. This has the tanginess of the Meyer lemon sauce, the richness of the lobster, the two of them together really good. Add to that the white burgundy, and it's going to be even better. How pretty. Every dish is so Pretty. Everything's beautiful. Everything's tasty. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so far the food at this restaurant lives up to the hype. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So you approved the mushroom? I mean the the, the lobster. Mm -hmm. Not the mushroom. Lobster. The mushroom I'm already drunk. <laughs> I was gonna say lobster. No, he, he loves the lobster. Off. Off. Yeah. The lobster mushroom. Lobster. <laughs>Sodi, which I've been told is like a ravioli with lots of winter black truffle shaved over the top. This is really a decadent meal. There's nothing more you can say about it that this is incredibly decadent. Okay, I'm having some of the cream and a piece of the truffle. That's good. Truffle pig would never leave this behind. <laughs> you just eat it. You just eat it. It's like you, you want your truffle, but you're not getting it. Oh my god, so good. Why am I asking the stupid question? That's so good. Garbiola's in the center. Yeah, I don't know. It just tastes good. I know it's good. I don't know, but it's good. Yeah. are getting a California cab to go with this Cabernet, um, which will go very well with the beef Wellington. And we're looking forward to trying this all together. I will tell you right now, I'm feeling all the wines we've had. Um, they're wonderful.
So some final thoughts on the French Laundry. Before we went to the French Laundry, we looked up on YouTube everybody who'd been there to get an idea of what we were getting ourselves in for. And all of the videos, they seemed to say, the most expensive dinner I ever ate. And, well, those of you who've been watching our channel for a while, you know we really don't look at the price of the dinner when we're, when we're going there. We'll either eat something that's really cheap and really good or really expensive and really good. And what our thing is, is we want really to get good food at whatever price. And we want good value for the food. Now, if you go to the French Laundry and you walk away and your, your biggest takeaway from there is, this is the most expensive dinner I ever ate, you've wasted your money. You really shouldn't be going there and thinking, oh, I'm eating here because it's expensive. And you shouldn't go there and think, oh, this was an expensive dinner. You should be thinking this was a good dinner. And if you're not thinking that, you've wasted your money. So don't waste your money at the French Laundry. But if, if you're going to go and walk away and say this was a really good dinner, then it's probably worth going. I will tell you, the dinner that we had was incredibly decadent. And uh, our friend wound up deciding she was going to do the works. And so we got truffles and we got caviar and we got Wagyu beef. And it was so rich that I woke up in the middle of the night with heartburn. You know, that happens when you're old. What can I say? And so I wound up, uh, you know, it was so decadent that the rest of this trip, I wasn't really able to eat much rich food because it was very rich. But it was delicious. The food was really good. I ate things that I never thought I'd eat. Yeah, I'm not a seafood person, and I ate uh, caviar. I ate uh, oysters. I don't like oysters, but I like these oysters with the pearls and the tapioca. Everything was really creamy. Everything was really rich. Everything was quite good, and I actually ate things I wouldn't normally eat, and I enjoyed them. Uh, I had quail. I don't usually eat quail, but that was good with the mushrooms. And the wines, the wines were absolutely just, you know, compared with the food, the wines cost almost as much as the dinner is. So again, thank you, Helen. You spent way too much for us, but it was really nice. Um, I definitely say this is a once in a lifetime experience. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't need to eat that kind of rich food in the future, but I enjoyed doing it this one time and uh, I'm glad I did it. It's an experience that I would never pass up. I think it was incredible, and it was worth doing for us.